So this is going to be the second video on concurrency and multi-threading systems and how to program them. So this is a complete series, so better you check it out. Let's start this topic. This is about concurrency in computer systems. So basically concurrency in computer system is divided or have two forms. There is this CPU, this is just one CPU, okay? And we have bunch of applications like A and then B, C. And another one is we have multiple CPUs. So this is CPU number one and then we have CPU number two. So four CPUs and let's say we have A, B, C and D, these applications. And there can be many applications here and here. So this is just for the illustration. So in first way, there is this single CPU switching between the applications. Okay. If you remember older days, we used to have simple computers having single CPUs and they were also able to run parallelly many applications together, right? So there can be n number of application, but the problem was as there was a single CPU, it was switching between applications. So let's say if you have this time frame and we have A, B and C. So first it will give some time T1 and similar time to B and C. But in order to run A, first it will have to load A's data, right? So it will load the data of A to the CPU, I mean here, and then it will execute A for some amount of time and then it will switch to B. So it will remove the data of A and switch to the data of B. Then only it can run B, right? And similarly for C, it will unload B and then load the data of C. Then only it can run C's application. So this much was actually kind of a wastage, right? You can see that we are loading and unloading the data of different processes and that takes time. But that time is not actually so much visible to you. Like you cannot see that, okay, if you're running a web browser here and playing some music, then these two things can go parallelly without any issue. But the moment you start increasing the number of applications, if you are from that era where you have used such applications in such computers, you will remember that if you will play a game, and simultaneously play some music or even open a web browser with many tabs, then you will realize that your music is playing in chunks. I have seen that because it will give some cycles to a browser and then some cycles to music and then it will keep switching. But the number of web browsers tab was so much or there were so many applications and then there was this music application. So it had to switch many applications and then there you will see the lag in the music because CPU is not just running the application, CPU is running the operating system also, right? So it is quite busy guy and then you throw so many applications to the single guy, it will take obviously so much time in switching. So that switching is a wastage of time and we cannot get away with this because we have single CPU. Now let's talk about the multiple CPU. You would have already guessed that, that if we assign this A application to here and this here, this here and this goes here. So now you see this, there are four CPUs running four applications parallelly and they don't have to switch. I mean, A is using its own CPU. This guy will only one time load A's data, B's data and C's data and D's data. Every CPU will load its applications data and then it won't switch again. I mean, this is just hypothetically framed so that you can understand this. Otherwise, even if you have so many CPUs, they still have to switch the job because there are at least 50 to 100 applications running in the background, like single operating systems run on multiple background applications. So this is a hypothetical example, but you can understand this, right? Like we are saving so much in terms of switching the application. And nowadays you would have got your laptops and computers and everything with at least four cores or four CPUs. I know that. And still you feel that, okay, it is slow. So this is the whole story about concurrency in computer systems. It has just two things. One, you have single CPU and then you have to switch between multiple processes and then you have multiple CPUs and then you have a lesser switching than compared to this single CPU. 
And one very important point to be noted is, I'm not talking about the threads here, I'm talking about the processors. Like one web browser, Chrome browser is one process. One music player is different process than this web process, I mean web browser. And if we talk about threads, like we have this music player, it can have n number of threads, like one thread is responsible for actually playing the music and another thread is to keep the GUI alive so that you can click on the buttons to play uh, the next track or increase the volume and decrease the volume. So if it was just a single threaded process, then it will be able to just play the music, you won't be able to do anything with that. So there are multiple threads with this so that you can do things parallelly in this single process itself. We'll cover these things in later videos. So this was the whole topic about this concurrency in computer systems. And I think you would have got the point now. I'll see you in the next videos guys. Bye bye. Take care.